All right, welcome everyone. If you are able to hear my voice outside, go ahead and please start making your way into the service. I'm Pastor Daniel. It's my pleasure to welcome you to GC2 Church's worship service. And I'm going to go ahead and pray to get our time started. Please join me. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to sing your praises, to hear your word, to pray with one another, to greet and embrace and love. Um, Lord, thank you for how you use this to conform us more and more to the image of your Son. Lord, there's nothing better that we can do than to seek to be like Jesus, to glorify you, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and thank you for how you use us to accomplish that within us. Father, please use this time to glorify yourself and to make an everlasting impact on all of us and to those who we get to have an impact on as we go out. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you guys stand with us? We are in a battle. But thanks be to God that he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our god almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows
consecrated Lord to thee take my moments and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love take my feet Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Take my silver and my gold, not a mind would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. Here Please be seated. I hope you all got the communion elements as you were coming through the door. Um, it is one of the, the two ordinances that our Lord's set for us to uh, partake of as we remember his work and what it means, how we identify in this communion is something that we do as a church, something that Christians have done throughout the centuries to identify with each other and with the Lord. We are those who partake of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's something that throughout the scriptures we see it's done as a church collectively. It wasn't an individual practice. I mean, we all come to it individually. You have to come by faith to do this. No one can put faith into your heart for you. It's a gift of God to you as the person, but we celebrate this because our identity in Christ is together his bride. 
So I invite you to share with me and with everyone else here in the Lord now. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him. same night he took a cup and he said this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood which is shed for the remission of the sins of the many take this in remembrance of him lord by your body and by your blood You have redeemed a people for yourself out of every nation, tribe, and tongue. Lord, what a a glorious thing. What a blessing to be numbered among the saints. And Lord, we know it's not because of any righteousness that was in us. Our righteousness was like filthy rags, but because of your body in place of ours, your blood shed in place of ours and for us. You have made us your own. The forgiveness of sins and the reconciliation to God. Lord, we thank you for it. Father, thank you for sending your son. Jesus, thank you for your obedience on our behalf. And Holy Spirit, thank you for opening your eyes, opening our eyes to this, that we would see and believe. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't know. just want you. And I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Caught up in your prayer.
nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Take a minute and dwell in God's presence. Thank you so much, worship team, for leading us into time of worship. Let's continue our service as we go into a time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we just come before you this afternoon to say that we love you. We just want you to be in our lives. And Lord, as we look at the beautiful sunsets and all the wondrous creation that you have made, Lord, it bears witness to an awesome God that we serve. And Lord, yet with all these things, we ask for your forgiveness for um, all the things in our lives that we prioritize ahead of you, Lord. Where we should be prioritizing our time with you, Lord. We spend time chasing after things that we desire, Lord. And, and we just come before you to ask for your forgiveness. And Lord, we thank you that you sent Jesus to, s to die for us on the cross. Lord, that through his pain, through the piercing of his hands and his feet, in the agony of separation from you, Lord, that he paid for our sins, that, Lord, we could have a relationship with you, that our sins are washed away. And, Lord, uh, we just thank you for that gift. We thank you for your grace. And, Lord, uh, we also pray that, um, that we'll continue to just chase after you, Lord. We thank you for the answered prayers in our congregation and our midst. And Lord, we continue to ask for your blessing. We continue to ask for your healing on those who are still recovering from illness. We pray for Sarah's dad, that Lord, that you will continue to heal him from, from COVID. And Lord, we also pray for those that reached out to us in our community, for Julie and for Nancy, who have asked for prayer and for help, Lord. I pray, God, that they will know that there is a Heavenly Father in heaven that loves them, that cares for them, and Lord, that you would provide the resources that they need. And Lord, uh, we also pray for our missionary of the month. We pray for Henry and Wilma. Lord, that you will continue to strengthen them as they do their ministry. Lord, that they would not grow weary or tired, but that they would be strengthened through your power, that they will continue to fight the good fight and run the race. Lord, we just thank you so much and pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
now to children only. Uh, we want to really appreciate also our children's leaders. Thank you very much. Let's give them a <laughs> applause here. All right. Did everyone get one of these? Um, awesome. Okay, we're going to use this later on. If, um, but, uh, you know, we had a great retreat last uh, yesterday. It was just uh, our leadership and our councils got together, and we just really could sense what God uh, moving us in, in unity. And definitely, it's uh, for me, just great to be back here with you guys after uh, spending last weekend in the Valley of Death. Um, otherwise known as the Death Valley. Um, and uh, indeed, God does answer prayer. The Rams beat the Buccaneers. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> okay, no, indeed. No, I, I didn't get to see, um, you know, Jill and, 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 and uh, family and Don last Sunday. I was like, wow, you guys are here. You know, God's been healing you and awesome. It's just exciting. Indeed, he does answer prayer. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, 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 sp I talked about my sister, um, my sister Rosie, who was mentally handicapped. And um, uh, Don, do we have a picture of that? Yeah. Uh, there's my sister there. She, uh, Christmas, it's a birthday. But uh, she, she passed away 13 years ago and, uh, in 2009. And, but she left a, a profound effect on my life. And um, I want to explain a bit why that is. Um, you know, when I was able to grow up, go to school, get a college degree, earn a couple of post-college uh, post, uh, degrees, my sister only got to fourth grade, and then she couldn't handle it anymore. Um, my abilities opened the door for me to, you know, get jobs, to uh, do work, um, my sister Rosie only, not even, I can't even say she only could work at McDonald's. She, they tried her out to just clean tables at McDonald's, and uh, she couldn't handle it. Uh, I en have thankfully enjoyed very few health problems um, in my life. Uh, my sister was always very frail and fragile, and uh, she passed away at the age of 62. And uh, she, she was never in good health. And while I was able to strike out in, you know, as every norm, you know, normally do, finish school, um, work, have a family, have your own household, my, my sister lived in you know, institutional care, in, in homes, in under the supervision of a social worker. Um, one of the things, though, you, I want to tell you about her and, and anyone who is mentally handicapped, is that they are people just like you and me. You know, she loved Elvis. <laughs> she, she, she loved to sing and to dance, and uh, she wanted to be loved like everyone else. Um, and she wasn't afraid to be in front of an audience. I guess that came with the Chen family, I guess. Um, and uh, she, she wanted to feel significant. And she loved going to church. She really did. You know, she was, she was this person locked in a body and in a mind that did not serve her well. Um, and I, I, I continue to get emotional at times when I think about how particularly my parents, you know, either felt embarrassment for, uh, because of her for, m for many, many years or or kind of just put her aside so I can't deal with her. I don't want to deal with her. And, and, and it, it, it still saddens me uh, to this day. Handicapped people have to overcome hurdles, barriers. They, they have to fight every day to overcome their barriers and their handicaps. And, and they should be held as heroes, not as embarrassments. And one thing that was very special about my sister is she, as I mentioned, she loved to go to church. She had this very simple childlike faith. 
You want to say, you could say, hey, we want to pray. She said, let's pray. I want to pray. Yeah. Let's read the Bible. And, and she would try, you know, she could actually read some ch- uh, Chinese. And she'll, she'll read and, and she'll sing and she loved to go to church. She had this childlike faith. Um, this, this awesome instant innocence, even though she um, had all these, these, these challenges in her life. Um, and so when she passed away at such an early age, you know, it was tremendously sad for me, but also a tremendous relief. That she was set free from this prison of a body and, and a mind that didn't work well for her. Um, and I know now she's set free, she's with Jesus, she's whole, and she's holy. This is, this is the, the wonderful blessing of knowing Christ. Um, how she, why I share today is how she affected me is, and how it relates to my message today is that our, her mental handicap really gave me a profound sense of understanding God's grace in my life. Because I said, I could do all these things, and she couldn't. And I said, the only difference that, reason that happened was not because I had some innate, I had no choice, she had no choice. It was God's choice, God's gracious choice to me, to give me these abilities and skills that I have. And by his grace, um, I have them. I have nothing I can be proud of myself, I say, uh, you know, I am so awesome. Um, and one of the things I want to talk about today is we talk about um, making the most of your abilities. Is the first to understand that everything we're able to do, everything you're able to do, everything you're able to accomplish now or in the future, they all come as a gift from God to you. They all do. You might say, well, I, I went for education, I went to training, everything. Yes, you did, and you put maybe hard work and discipline in, in that and sacrifices, but without what God has given you, your innate ability, without that gift, all that work would not amount to what you're able to do. Right? You understand that? I was profoundly understood that because of my sister, growing up with her and my family, um, knowing that yeah, she, <laughs> she could have all the opportunities, but she was not given forever by God's choice that ability. But thankfully, she was given a heart of love and faith. And there were things that I could go into another message about, like we judge people and we value, put value and worth on ability and skills. But my sister also taught me that you could just be a person. You could just, just be a person. And not great accomplishments, and be so special, so special. Here's what the Bible says. I want to just give you examples of what the Bible says about how our gifts, our abilities, are, are from the Lord. Um, Exodus 31, verse one through five, as an example. Oh, I guess it didn't get updated. Um, Okay. We'll do with 35. Um, those aren't the verses I have. Okay. So <laughs> we, <laughs> we didn't have a little um, internet problem. I, you know, I guess some of you will be watching this later online because we don't have Wi-Fi and internet connection right now. So I guess our computer didn't get updated. But um, okay, let's just go with verse 35. I'll just let's go with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moses assembled the whole Israelite community and said to them, wow, that was really different. Okay, never mind. Uh, that was my bad. Uh, okay, you know what? I, I might have uh, did 35 instead of 31. Okay, what I really want to do is 31. Okay, Exodus 31, 1 through 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bez- Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, 
silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. So in that passage, in Exodus 31, it makes it clear that God endowed these men, uh, Bezalel and, and others, with these giftedness of craftsmanship and knowledge and understanding. So think about yourself. Think about your abilities, what you can do. Some of you I know are awesome in sports, basketball, right, and um, pickleball. And some of you are great at studying and taking exams and remembering things and knowing facts and figures. Um, some of you, uh, you know, have that aptitude for engineering or designing computer hardware um, or playing instruments, singing, whatever, right? Think about the abilities you have. And if you put your name and your talent in that passage, it's saying the same thing about you. That it was the Lord he, who chose you and put those abilities in you, those raw talents. All your abilities are from God. None, none of us can take credit for it. Uh, none of us can build up our ego and say, look how awesome I am. No, never do that. It's a gift from God. Instead, we should be saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's another set of abilities the Bible talks about, and it, it, it talks about in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 10. It says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them, in everyone, it's the same God at work. Now, to each one, of each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between Spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. There's another set of abilities that the Bible talks about here, and we call them spiritual gifts. They're given by the Holy Spirit to believers, and believers only, for the purpose of building up the church, building up the kingdom, blessing, um, uh, blessing the body of Christ. And the, and the listed here are just um, listed here as many of the miraculous spiritual gifts. But in other parts of the Bible, uh, it it will list like gifts of compassion, spiritual gift of service, of leadership, administration. These are all gifts that God has given to each one of you also, if you're a believer. When the Holy Spirit came into you, you have that gift as well. And then there's one more passage I want to share with you about how God's endowed you with uh, who you are. Psalm 139, 13. Verse 13 says, For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Um, the, the Hebrew word translated as inmost being could literally mean here like your, our internal organs. But in the rest of the Psalms where it's used, um, the English translation takes the metaphorical meaning of heart. So if you, the same Hebrew word used everywhere else in the Psalm they translated heart instead of inmost being. But so if we took that meaning to put into Psalm 139, uh, 139 verse 13 saying, really saying, for you created my heart. For you created my heart. The heart is the, the core of who you are. It's, it's the seed of your desires, seed of your passion. So he created your heart's desires. He created your heart's passion. And it's also a seed of emotion. So he, he created who you are as an emotional, personal uh, personality. And some of you, you know, are extroverts, and some of you are introverts. Some of you are, like, loud, and others of you are quiet, and some of you are very organized, and some of you are very spontaneous. All those things is part of who you are, your heart beats. And God has created you that way, too. And there's this, this acronym, and this is where the handout will come in, this side of the acronym. Um, there's this acronym that we use, SHAPE, that 
spells out um, these, these words. S standing for spiritual gifts. And H stands for heart desire. So yeah, write this down. I think it's important to remember this. Heart's desire. Um, A is your abilities. P is your personality. And E is your experience. Your experience. So all together, those combinations of how God has put all these ingredients and abilities in you, it creates your unique shape. Your spiritual gifts, your heart's desires, your abilities, your personality, your experiences, all create your unique shape. And I want to illustrate the, the reason this is so significant to you is uh, through my little kid's toy here. This is, just little, this is actually from my kids, my older ones who are now in their 30s. Their 30s. Yeah, we keep some of these things. So, have you seen something like this before? Yeah, you know, you know preschoolers, you know, play with this. You know, they got all these <laughs> random blocks and shapes of triangles and, and ovals and stuff like that. And then, of course, this box here. And, and the, you know, um, the, the game is to find the right shape w with the right block, and then you can go and put it in the box. So, you know, I can't put this here. I can't put the, oh, yeah, I can. Oh, I can. Okay. So, but I can't put it here. Um, so I have to match, right? Every little kid has got to match the shape of the block with the opening. And it was you proverbial, you can't put a, what, a round peg in a square hole or something like that, right? It, the shape determines how it can fit. And the same thing, uh, how God has shaped you determines so much of your life. It really helps you understand God's purpose and design for your life. Um, let, let me give you some examples, okay? And um, this is, this, don't, don't think that's for the backside, okay? Just, just listen here. Okay? For example, let's say your, your, your spiritual gift is the gift of help, okay? And, and your heart's desire is to organize. You just love to organize things. And your ability you, know, you find out, I'm pretty, really good at math. I'm really good at math. And your personality is very detailed on you. You know, because you're organized and you want to make sure things, you know, every detail is covered and, and not lost. And your experiences was that you did some business internship or uh, maybe you helped out in your family's business. You know, you put that shape together and what possibly could you think if you're a, you're a student saying, boy, um, what has God designed me to be like? Well, and maybe you, God is pushing you towards an area of like accounting or something like that, right? That wouldn't that fit? Someone with an accountant would, yeah, he likes to help an organization of people with their finances. Um, definitely got to be organized, good in math, detail conscious, and, and business orientation. So your shape, especially speaking to the students, you know, it's like as you're trying to understand who I am and what's my abilities, how has God shaped me, that will help you understand even your career direction or where you should be majoring in. Or how about in, in a church example, how about, how about your role in the body of Christ? Um, let's say your spiritual gift is a gift of compassion and your heart's desire is that people get saved. You want people to get saved. And, and, and your abilities, are you're really good at organizing projects and programs and your personality is an extrovert and you like talking with people and because let's say you grew up with your grandparents a lot uh, in, your, in your life or even in your home you just love old folks seniors put that together and say what what does that all mean to me what was God showing me through all that I mean maybe he's he, he, he shaped you that way so he wants you to be in the area of outreach to seniors and, and to love them and, and be in their community and, and organize the church uh, to help in, in um, to, to help with shut-ins and seniors. You get the idea? It, it even helps you, again, for some of us who are single and dating, maybe understand who we should marry and who we should not marry. 
To give you, a, for example, let's say uh, a guy has got leadership, you know, uh, as a spiritual gift, and his personality, I mean, his heart is to start new things. He's got this entrepreneurial spirit. He, um, he, his aptitude is to do, do business. He's an extrovert, and his experience growing up is that his, uh, his family was in the business world, and they did great. So he said, hey, this is, this is me. But he, met, he meets a girl who also has the spiritual gift of leadership, but um, her heart's desire is security and, and safety. Um, and she's, she's her ability is that she's uh, very good at academic research. Her personality is introvert, uh, but... Her family experience is that they went through personal bankruptcy. You know? Uh, they may not be a very good match together because they're both leaders, but they're leading and pushing on different directions, and they probably end up butting their heads more than, <laughs> than anything. So, so much of how God has given you these talents, abilities, heart's desire, your personality, really gives you an indication, direction of, um, what his plan and his desires for you and how you should proceed. So the implication of all this is that we ought to be on a lifelong journey of discovering and honing the abilities, the gifts, uh, the shape that God has placed in us. And it's a lifelong journey. You know, you say, I'm an adult then, I... I've done this, I figured this out. No, you know what? Guess what? We change. Our personalities change. Our experiences change. Uh, we expand and, and we gain in different interests. Our heart's desire to move in different ways. And we may discover we had an ability we never had before. I mean, uh, President uh, Bush became an artist you know, <laughs> after he be, uh, finished his presidency. You know, who knew, right? So, it's a lifelong discovery. It's a process. And um, what that then leads to the question, though, in all of this, what do we do with this? So we know, we understand, we hone and develop these abilities and talents, get an education, get an experience, whatever it takes. What do we do with the shape that God has given us? And it's basically three fundamental choices. You can use that shape to serve and please yourself. Second choice is serve and please others, other people. Or third one is to serve and please God. Now, the self-centered person will take choice number one. I'll take door number one. I use all these ability talents and everything to serve myself. To please me, to get what I want in life, to have uh, the best possible life I can give myself. That's a self-centered person's number one priority. And maybe, yeah, maybe they also serve other people and serve God even. If it serves their own interest, if it makes them happy. You know, if they get some pleasure out of it and people like them, yeah, they'll do it too. That's a self-centered person. The question is, is that where you're at? I, I certainly hope not. Um, then, well, you know, there's the nice people. The nice people say, I want to use all these gifts and abilities that God has given me, and I'll serve and please other people. Awesome. Um, and then second, I might please myself, and of course, if they believe in God, they'll serve and please God too. That sounds better, right? You're being very generous, other-oriented. But what is the Christian? What's, what's the, where is the Christian's priority? 1 Corinthians 10, 31, 33 tells us, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. 
This is acronym. That's the, s- the bottom part here, joy. That really helps us understand what this passage is saying. Is what's the priority? What are we supposed to be doing with all the shape that God has given us? And the first is that whatever you do, eat, drink, do it for all the glory of God. So J stands for Jesus, okay? Jesus first. The first priority in what you're doing with your life, your ability, your talents, all the things, your personality, is that you want to use it to glorify God, to glorify your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But you notice right after he says that in verse 32, then he talks about do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews or Greeks. And he's talking about other people. So O stands for others. So the, the working out of glorifying God, very important, is also using this, your t- gifts and abilities to serve and please others. And the third then, why is yourself? So you're the last priority. You're the last priority. So the secret to joy, <laughs> okay, is Jesus first, others second, yourself third. And you're going to say, that doesn't sound right, maybe, because that's not what you're hearing in the world. You know, you deserve a break today, you know. Uh, go for the gospel. That the world wants you to turn that upside down, and you just get yaj, which makes <laughs> me, right? You just get yaj, which makes no sense. No, really, Jesus first, others second, yourself third. Joy. So, let me summarize here. What I've been trying to say is, first of all, that every innate ability comes from God. Everything you innately can able to do, sports, music, academics, interpersonal skills, whatever, ultimately, something that comes from God. Secondly, your God-given shape directs you to God's purpose and calling for your life. I know so many of you, uh, you know, in school are trying to figure out what is my, you know, what, what is my career and what major should I have? This, what I'm telling you is so important to help you understand those answers to those questions. Because God has shaped you, and that shape gives you understand God's purpose and calling for your life. And then thirdly, our job, first of all, is to discover and hone our God-given shape. That's part of your you know, secular education. But even within the church, uh, learning what your spiritual gifts is, understanding the shape concept is so important. And, and actually, this is a huge part of what I'm covering in the uh, membership class coming up in February. It's going to be the first three Sundays of, um, of February at 10 to 11.30 on Zoom. So, hey, you know, even if you're a member, and you say, I just got... I just want to understand better how God has shaped me and where I fit and his plan and his purpose and, and, and even in church. Hey, come, you know, it's just join in. I will give you the link and you can s- also learn with those who are also uh, seeking to become members of the church. And we're really glad for uh, those of you who already expressed interest in becoming members of GC too. I'm excited about that too. So that's one we all, so, um, your education, training, inviting you to membership class, and then trying out different things. You know, you, you learn by experience, so you learn this, and go, oh, um, I'm good at that, I'm good, not good at that. There was, there was a period, my second daughter, she had like a, when she was in junior high, she had like a, a new interest every month. Gymnastics, now, dancing, um, uh, acting. You know, it w- and f- we as imma- you know, immature parents at that point were like, this is so frustrating. Like, this girl cannot concentrate on any one thing. She's like this, you know, little butterfly. But no, now we look back and we understand she was trying to explore, like trying different things, saying what does she like, what does she um, does, doesn't like, what she's good at, what she's not good at. So um, try out, serve, explore, uh, learn different things, and understand better your shape. And the fourthly here is, Joy defines the priority you should apply uh, to your shape, okay? Joy. Jesus first, others second, yourself third. So let's see how that works out in some real-life situation. How about your work? Okay. 
Let's look at your work and say, how does, how does putting Jesus first, other second, and yourself third work out using your shape in your education or your work life? Well, so I'll start with Jay. Giving glory to God through your schooling work. Well, your abilities opens doors to put you in fields and places and classes and offices that no one else can that doesn't have that skill ability. I sure can't be joining some of you guys in the uh, defense industry. I, I can't definitely you know, be <laughs> you know, at the basketball court with you young guys or you know, anything like that because I don't have that ability, but you do. And that opens the door for you to be there, to be present, as, and that is your mission field. That is God opening the door through your skills and abilities to be in that mission field. Those people you're in contact, that place is then your God's assignment to you to be the light, to be the salt of the earth to them. That's so key and important to understand the calling you have because of the, the skills you have in your work or your school ability. And how about others? Of course, then through that desire to serve others, you can you join in the company, and it, let's say you're working for a company that s provides a service, provides a product that is beneficial and help with other people, even through your skills of being an accountant or a, a manager or a programmer. And you say, well, I'm, I'm not really affecting people. Yes, you are, because you're using that skill to help that company or that organization provide a service or a product that's going to be benefiting other people. So again, it's hard. It's like, yeah, this is just drudgery. This is service. This is blessing other people. And of course, your coworkers, your chance to be working with other people and helping them and, and, and um, supporting them. And thirdly, another great way uh, through that is, of course, witnessing to your coworkers. And, uh, and you know, the better employee you are, the better worker you are, the better student you are, in the w minds of other people in the world, you have more credibility. You have more respect. Because that's how our world works. And when they say, wow, you're such a good athlete, and what, you follow Jesus? You believe in Jesus? Oh, you are a scientist, and you, and you love God, and you go to church? What, what's going on here? You know? You understand that the opportunity you have that the talents and abilities God gives you opens to be a great witness to others. And there's a list here also, of course, the money you earn. It's not just for yourself. It's also so that you can use that money you earn to share, to help the poor, the needy, to build up the church, to send and support missions. There are so many things just through your career of using your talents and abilities. And then lastly, well, how about yourself? Of course, God doesn't want you to just not enjoy the work or the education you're getting. It's oppo the uh, opportunity to earn a living, of course, for your own financial need, and to fulfill the desires and skill levels that you have and your passions, your interests, and to build friendships. So God wants to bless you in these kind of environments too. You know, when you put all these threes together, you find joy in your education, joy in your workplace. How about your home life? Let's switch there. How does this work out? How does joy work out at home? Well, being a Christ-centered example is the most important thing. Being an example of a Christ follower to the rest of your family. Even I'm not just talking to the parents. I'm talking to the kids because you have an influence on the rest of the family and your siblings, even your parents. And you can lead others to Christ in your own family. You know how I came to Christ? It's because my older brother came home from youth camp, church youth camp, and he said, Mom, Luke, I want to tell you what happened at camp. And he sat us down at the, at the kitchen table and he described how he heard the gospel and how he accepted Christ at youth camp. And, you know, I, I, I grew up in church. I went to Sunday school and that stuff like but no one ever really explained the gospel to me like that until my brother did. And I said, wow, if he did that, I want to know more about this. 
And by God's providence, around a month and a half later, there was a missionary that came to speak to the youth group. I was in junior high, and I just, two things I remember. He, he, he talked about, he served in New Guinea, and there were cannibals there at one time. And then secondly, he shared the gospel. And I accepted Christ. He goes, a lot of well, my brother accepted Christ. I'm going to accept Christ, too. See, you, you can have such an influence in the family for the, for the, for the Lord. Um, oh, others, of course, sharing, sharing your faith, but serving others in your family. I know we all love doing chores, right? Yeah, you know, it's just excited. Oh, yeah, but we got, that's part of just serving one another, those practical ways of helping one another. Uh, helping each, maybe your brother or sister with homework or his adult, you know, even the ability to do investments and put the money into IRAs and all the things you're doing, that's part of serving your family, the skills and talents God's given you. Yes, God wants to bless, bless you with joy for yourself too because as you also do this, you have this great sense of belonging. You can pursue interests and hobbies. You have family to be with. See, when you put it all together, there's joy. And lastly, one more example. How does this work in church life? Well, first of all, you want to serve. You want to serve Christ to build up the kingdom and the church. That's Jesus first. And you serve sacrificially. And oh, serve others and with others according to your shape and your abilities. Be a part of a team. Don't be filled with pride and ego. Look, you know, you got to listen to me. I'm great. No. You work together and humbly and lovingly. Then for yourself, you find the satisfaction that you are fulfilling God's purpose for yourself and you are building up the blessed bride of Christ and you're storing up eternal treasures in heaven. So, what I want you to do as our reflection today, uh, you might have filled this out already. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have told you. This is actually meant for you, okay, for yourself. In the back here. Let's say, take just one category because that's time only time allowed and do the rest at home. But take, take, take your work maybe or take your family life or take church life. And s think about yourself. Like, okay, what has God blessed you with in terms of abilities, talents, personality, spiritual gifts? Say, how can I honor Jesus? Give him glory in that realm, whether it's the work, wor your work realm, school realm, your family realm, or the church realm. And then how is God shaping you to be serving um, in that realm other people? Maybe there you can think of, is there a co-worker if you're in, in work? They say, you know, I, I really haven't thought, but I really should be a better teammate. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I should really figure out how I can help the rest of the team. And if you're a manager or leader, and just instead of being just a boss, say maybe I need to be a servant leader to them. And then for yourself, lastly, what do you will you get out of this if you're putting Jesus first, other second, and yourself third? Get the idea? So I'm going to give you some time right now um, for this reflection time. Think, how could you make the best of your abilities, the most of your abilities, for really eternal purposes?
Let's pray. Lord, we recognize you as the creator. You are the one that has made us. We are the clay and you are the potter. Um, you are the one that formed us, the unique shape that you have given us. You are the one who is in control over all of our days, all of our experiences. And Lord, we as your people, we are those that know that everything works together for our good. We are called according to your purpose. We love you by your spirit. And so, Father, for all of us, please show us the ways that we would use our talents, use our abilities to glorify you, to serve others, and to live the lives that you have called us to live. In Jesus' name, amen. In the Bible, there's a story of this woman who came to Jesus, and um, she had a little jar, an alabaster jar that was filled with very expensive perfume. And um, she, back in those days, the uh, women did not have status or very much money of their own, but some women had this little jar of perfume that they kept around their neck and they took with them everywhere. And um, so this woman came and she broke her jar and poured it on Jesus' feet or on his head, depending on which version of the story. <laughs> but um, it was this woman's most likely her most prized possession, and um, she gave it to Jesus. This next song that um, that we're going to sing talks about offering our alabaster jar to Jesus. Whatever God has been showing you um, in your hearts of the talents that you have that um, he wants you to give to him, I pray that you uh, think of those things and uh, offer them to him as we sing this next song. Alabaster jar is all I have of worth. I break it at your feet, Lord. It's less than you deserve. You're far more beautiful, more precious than the ore. The sum of my desires and the fullness of my joy. Like you spilled your blood, I spill my heart as an offering to my King. Here I am, take me as an Strength and 
though my days are few, you gave your life to me, so I will live my life for you. Like you spilled your blood, I spill my heart as an offering to my King. Here I am, take me as an offering. Here I am, give every heart for your glory. Here I am, take me as an offering. Here I am, give every. God, we offer our whole lives to you, every part of it, whatever we've been holding back, God, help us to offer those to you wholly and completely. Use us in wherever we are in our lives. As long as we have breath, God, use us for your glory. Thanks, Jess and worship team, for leading us in powerful worship today. Um, a few announcements for this week. So glad to see you all here, and um, blessings to those who will be watching this in the future. Um, thank you so much for your generosity and your faithfulness in continuing to give to support the ministry here at GC2 Church. Please um, continue to just do that, and um, thank you. There, the annual giving statements are coming soon, so we need to let Ada know if you'd like those emailed to her. Um, please let her know if you want them by email. Otherwise, they'll be passed out here at church. And of course, um, let's continue to lift up Henry and Wilma um, as our missionaries of the month. And um, I heard that Henry was able to go to pickleball this week. Praise the Lord. Um, so just continue to remember them um, in your prayers. And the membership class um, is coming up. It sounds like it's going to be really exciting. Um, and so please talk to Pastor Luke if you would like more information about that. Thanks so much, Carla. Um, yeah, so please, uh, we want to learn more, understand more about yourself and how God has blessed you and shaped you. We're going to particularly look at uh, spiritual gifts in relationship to your role in ministry in the church, too. Um, there'll be different tools, different ways, strategies we want to uh, teach about how to do that. So, yeah, we'll be sending that information out uh, starting this week. Um, 
this concludes this four-part series that we've had, Make the Most Of. Make the most of uh, your life, your time, your, uh, your money, and, of course, your abilities today. And our hope, our goal, this greatest desire is that, you know, you're not just building treasures here. Because as the Bible says, right, in, in um, Matthew 6, 19, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermins destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Now, if you're aiming for earthly goals, uh, it's all going to deteriorate. But if you're aiming your life at heavenly kingdom goals, you're storing up treasures in heaven, that's what God wants you to do. Uh, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermins do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Um, we have much more, of course, this year in terms of teaching and equipping and sending you out. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. Um, l let's stand, and let me close with some prayer. Father, we are so uh, blessed, and we therefore we are so grateful for all the gifts you give to us. And not only the gifts of talk about abilities today, but the, the gift of life, uh, the gift of, uh, of time, so precious these days, um, and the gift of ability to earn, to money, and to make a living, all these things, Lord, uh, we should never take granted, never take, uh, uh, fill ourselves with pride and ego and say, look how, look how good I am. No, Lord, it is look how good you are. And we pray as we um, go from here, our hearts will now be filled with gratitude and just simply end it at that to say, Lord, what can I give? What can I offer in response to your goodness? And I pray that for each of us, Lord, that you will stretch our faith, stretch the boundaries of what we think is possible. That you are a God who is God of, of the impossible. You can do all things. And so, Lord, I close with this prayer that you will do the impossible in each one of us. And then as we come to the end of 2022, we can look back and say, God, you have been amazing. You have been amazing. I pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.